Hi, I'm Steve Shanesty. I'm publisher and editorial director with Popular Woodworking Magazine. I'm at the AWFS show in Las Vegas today, and I have the real privilege of interviewing someone who probably needs no introduction. That's Norm Abram of the New Yankee Workshop. Norm, it's really great to be here today. Oh, Steve, this is fun. Yeah, it's great. Welcome. Um, Norm, I've got a few questions for you, things I know people will be interested to know about you and your career here. Um, Woodworking, if you had to start over again, and you were thinking about the three most important tools you were going to start with, major tools, mm -hmm. let's say, right. tell me what would those be? Well, you know, I, I've thought about this a lot over the years because people ask that question frequently, and all I have to do is think back of whenever I'm working on a project in the New Yankee Workshop, what are the tools that I always use in almost every single project? And the table saw is at the top of the list. I mean, if you're going to have a woodworking shop, that's a tool you're going to use a lot. That touches every single project. The second one, I think a lot of woodworkers, especially beginners, don't think about, and that's a joiner. Um, I really feel that it's important to have a joiner because these days, or at any time, if you're buying rough lumber and you want to straighten it out to do your project, uh, it's really the best way that you can do it. And Given that fact, you almost need to follow that up with a surface planer because you need those three things to prepare your wood. Once your wood is prepared, then the table saw comes into major play, and there are other tools used, but those three, the table saw, the joiner, and a surface planer. And a surface planer doesn't have to be a, you know, a big, heavy-duty, can't-pick-it-up kind of surface planer. I mean, the portable planers that came out in the last few years they do a pretty good job. Yeah, they do. And we all know if you don't start with stock that's <laughs> square and parallel, your project's going to, it's going to be trouble all well, the way There's through. nothing like building a cabinet door and one piece is just twisted a little bit and you put it all together and you put the hinges on, you close it and it hits at the bottom and it's open at the top. You're like, oh. I've heard that's true. It's never happened to me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, um, here's a question for you. Say, God forbid, the New Yankee Workshop was on fire. <laughs> So what was the, the what would be the tool you'd grab on the way out the door? Oh boy, that's a that's a hard one because I probably wouldn't be able to carry the the big ones out of the door. Oh, the time saver, right? The time saver, yeah. The time saver would probably be way up at the top of the list, but uh, gee, I don't know. You know, that's a that's a hard thing to to say. I mean, I think I would I would go to the hand tool chest that I have on the back corner of the wall and grab you know my premium chisels and my good plane and any of the hand tools that that are really kind of precious and yeah. special i mean you can always replace the power tools but the hand tools that you've been using for a long time those are the ones that you want to carry out with you yeah yeah okay um you've made a lot of projects over the years on the new yankee workshop tell me what was the most challenging maybe what was your favorite and maybe there might have been one you would have wished you hadn't done <laughs> Well, I think there's, uh, the most challenging and, my, and the favorite are really, it's real close, but I, I would say the most challenging definitely was when I built the Tiger Maple High Boy a couple yeah. of years ago. Okay. And that uh, really took a lot of time and uh, patience because there's a lot of handwork in that piece and selecting the wood and, and I, you know, I can walk into my bedroom and look at that piece and I just feel really good about it. That was a major accomplishment. But another one of my favorites is one of my outdoor projects, which is the Lutchens bench. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, really nice English bench with the back and all those, there's like 70 or 80 mortise and tenon joints in that bench, and that's it. But if I had to pick one of those two, I would say it's definitely the high boy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as far as the one we probably should not have built, it actually still sits out behind the new Yankee workshop. It's called a dove coat. And we shot it, uh, we did a visit to historic Williamsburg and we shot it and for the year, years and years, no one ever ordered the plans or the video. A couple of weeks ago, somebody, we decided, oh, we'll just get rid of it. We had like 20 videos. We, when we sold them, we said, we're not making any more. Somebody called about a week ago and said, can I still get the plan and the video for the dove coat? So we're struggling now trying to find a version of that. So that one was probably the only one that, uh, I would have never built. Yeah. Um, we've heard you say many times that your father was a huge influence yeah. in getting you started in woodworking. I um, was wondering, is there a living woodworker today that you admire the most? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, there's, a, there's a lot of woodworkers out there, but uh, 
It's interesting, I just watched a PBS documentary about American craftsmanship. And it, a great series. it was a great series, and it, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just woodworkers, it was woodworkers and potters. My wife happens to be a potter, basket maker. And uh, I met Sam Maloof once. He just walked into the New Yankee workshop, and I would have to put him at the top of the list. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, he had a great line in that video, you know, when he picked up the router and he said, I'm 90 years old and I'm still doing this. And I just hope when I'm 90, I can still be doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a legend in his own yeah, time, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we know that you're going to start your 19th season this year. If I 20. Remember, 20th season this year, I stand corrected. Uh, tell us a little bit what you have planned. Well, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this year. Uh, we will be doing some furniture projects later in the season, the last four episodes of the 13. But the first nine are going to be dedicated uh, to a shop-built kitchen. Wow. And we've been talking about that for quite a few years. And um, It's a major undertaking. Yeah, and, and um, I think uh, even, and, you know, in the woodworking level for building a kitchen is not overly complicated. I mean, it's pretty accessible. And I think if people think about it in, in one way is that if you were to buy the tools, if you didn't have the tools and you bought the tools and you had a certain level of skill, you, those tools would pay for themselves in, in one kitchen. Yeah. And you can just figure that everything else you build after that is a freebie. But it's not, it's not rocket science, you know. It's, it's, we decided in the kitchen for a couple reasons. Materials have changed in the last few years. So the you know, pre-finished plywoods, MDF if you're doing a painted kitchen. Uh, the hardware has uh, got dramatically better and, and design of the, we're not trying to be designers. We're really, it's all about the woodworking. How do you build a good carcass for a base cabinet? How do you uh, build your drawers and draw fronts and doors? And, and uh, just this week we were working on the bar unit, which uh, I built a true divided light door. There's a pair of them actually for the upper cabinet. And I think people will be surprised to see that with a little bit of patience and a good uh, router bit set, that you can make a pretty nice door. Yeah. So uh, we're hoping people get interested in it. And the first two shows will be basics. What kind of space do you need? What kind of tools do you need? We'll visit Bloom. It'll be nine episodes, including the installation, which I'll be doing next week. Oh, that'll be really helpful for people. You know, kitchens may look intimidating, but let's face it, it's, just, it's box building. And it's just putting those boxes together. Right, and you know, I met a woodworker, uh, actually he was a, a commander of a submarine base down in uh, Georgia. Many years ago I met him and he was a big fan of the show. And he's a tremendous woodworker. He does beautiful work, self-taught. I said, how'd you get into this? He said, well, you know, we had this cabinet of vanity in the bathroom and I needed to make a countertop for it. And I just said, I can do it. And he made a countertop and then he said, well, I can make a cabinet and from there, He's building furniture and, you know, just it's like a spark that gets people going. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Norm, the uh, New Yankee Workshop's been on a long time. It's had a great run. Um, I've heard said no one ever thought it would have this kind of legs, right. but it has, and it's been wonderful for the whole woodworking community over the years. But I wonder, someday there's a horizon out there. What do you plan to do with your time once the New Yankee Workshop series comes to a close? <laughs> Well, I think, as my wife will tell you, she said, you're always going to be doing something, because I'm, I'm not going to sit back and do nothing. And I'm always going to be involved in woodworking. Uh, the one thing that I haven't been able to do with the New Yankee Workshop as much as I would like to is, you know, part of it is a job. You're producing TV shows, trying to inspire people to do woodworking, and we're keeping the projects at a certain level. And I've designed some pieces of my own, but I really haven't had the freedom to really sit back and, and experiment a lot and try things that probably wouldn't make great TV. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that period of time. I mean, my wife and I have a plan to build, uh, you know, sort of uh, our ultimate dream workshop pottery studio. Oh, yeah. And um, I'll be playing around with that. And, you know, a lot of people know that I love to boat, so I'll be doing more boating. I was going to say, you might spend some time on the water. I'd actually want to build a, a, a tender for my, for my regular boat, oh, so yeah. that would be another good boat project. We yeah. built a sailboat a few years ago, and I'd like to build another boat. And I'd like to build another house. Yeah. I'd like to build a very uh, downsize. I think people today with energy start thinking about downsizing. I would like to downsize, build a very efficient house. And, uh, and build it green, as, as green as possible, yeah, anyway. Yeah. But uh, 
I, I think I got plenty of stuff lined up for the future. I think you're going to be busy. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to be busy. <laughs> well, Norm Bliss, it's been great talking to you here. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Uh, PBS stuff.